So here we are looking into Luma Fusion, and uh, there's a number of things. One of the first things that you need to note is that in touch alternatives, if you have touch alternatives on and you try to use Command B, nothing occurs. However, if you then take touch alternatives off and use Command B, you can do everything that you would do with the keyboard on um, an iPad Pro or anything like that, which makes life a little bit easier. So knock touch alternatives off. Now, I have here um, a load of files, and let's say I want to bring some more in. Now, you currently you'll see that we're sat in imported. I want to go to files, I want to add a link to a folder. We know how this works. Um, I'm going to go to Pocket 2 because I've got that in. I want DSIM. I want 100 media. We know this works on the iPad. But here on the M1 Mac, no. Won't add links to folders. However, we can go to try and import media from files. Here we are in the right place. Let's pick up that one. It just happens to be whatever it was that I shot donkeys ages ago. Let's open it. What we don't get is anything telling us that it's actually doing it. But here is the file. And it's nothing of anything really. Let's just have a quick look at it. And it's working very well. It's coming quite quickly, but there's no information that it's happening unfortunately um, which is a little bit of a shame however uh, multi-select works start from there with a selection and then select the lot so that's excellent and as you would expect we can go there we can uh, pick up more or less anything we want really uh, it's all as it should be. Everything appears to be working pretty well. So all good. Um, let's apply Vibrance. Right, that's that done. So I've now applied Vibrance to everything. Take multi-select off. Run it through and it all looks pretty good. So that's fine. Everything's working the way it should. And then you go to export and when you click the export button this is the first thing you're going to see cannot verify luma fusion purchase um, click ok on that carry on as though it hadn't happened go to export to files let's change to the last export settings which are 1080 uh, hevc h265 blah 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 3.9 gigs carry on and it's going to ask you then to rename the file if that's what you want to do. Uh, so I'll make that test at 1080. And then you click the export. And it carries on. And it will go. This is a 9 and what is it? Just shy of 10 minutes. And uh, it won't take it that long to do as it happens. Which is pretty good. But I can tell you now. This will happen in less than four minutes uh, we're already 10 percent of the way through that's taking no time at all i'm just keeping an eyeball on the time 11 24 it says in the top right hand corner if we look up there so there's ways and means around using luma fusion on your m1 even though there are things that it won't do that it does do on the ipad and the iphone or whatever else you're running it on um, having to import files you can do that on a case by case basis so you, you, you're importing them first before um, you decide to use them on your timeline it's not too much of an issue it's just a different way of doing it not as easy, not as slick not as quick, not as seamless if you like one of the other things as well that doesn't work is if you plug an external monitor in um, in order to be able to see your 
actual video on an external monitor while you're editing on the timeline inside LumaFusion it won't do that off the M1 either um, but again how much of a ball ache is that uh, from my perspective if I'm out and about um, even though I can sidecar um, the iPad Pro to the M1 Mac itself um, you still can't do it that way which is a bit of a shame so that airplay side of things isn't working um, inside of LumaFusion yet however of course you've always got the alternative of being able to use Final Cut um, which indeed you can you can load Final Cut up uh, while LumaFusion is outputting so let's get away from that load final cut pro and you can see there's not a great fat lot of uh, so that's it loaded that's fine let's go back to luma fusion didn't really slow it down much did it let's go back into final cut um, and just start that playing uh, do i want to mute it this is I've just been messing around with this it's outputting it it, it seems extremely capable does this I'm really quite impressed um, whether or not you can transport a project over from the iPad I've yet to try um, I'm just looking at this from the point of view of would I need to take both my iPad and my MacBook Air with me on a trip or would I not need to hard to say really I could manage with just the uh, the MacBook Air with the M1 processor I'd probably take both anyway because there's not a fat lot of weight between the two of them anyway here we are coming up to uh, the finish of this that's it it is done it has taken around about four and a half minutes test of 1080 is where it's it's going to be called i'm going to save it into downloads save and that's how it works it's done job is done about four and a half five minutes for what is a 10 minute movie that is quick um and i quite like that so there you go you can use luma fusion on your m1 macbook air or macbook pro i'll freely admit this one is the uh, 16 gigabytes of memory and 512 uh, gigabytes of ssd hard disk space anyway there you go that's this bit